I was studying in America, I was studying mathematics at the time, and I had heard, I'd read that three million people had died, and the toll is now five million. And at that time, I, all I found were small, these short 200 word stories in newspapers. And, and I thought to myself that th these huge events were happening, massive events affecting the lives of millions of people, and there weren't enough reporters there. And that's when I decided to go myself to report what was happening in the Congo. Uh, so I think the reasons are two. The first is that Congo is intimately linked to our economies, to our world. Uh, it supplies minerals and raw materials for our electronics, uh, computers, telephones, our jewelry. And the relationship we share with Congo is not often not noble. Often these minerals and metals are mined by children in horrific conditions. Uh, as one example, uh, often the mining of these materials is linked to great violence. And I think as humans, we tend not to look at our own flaws. And Congo is one of that, those flaws in our world, in the systems we've constructed, in the economies we've built. And so there's a reluctance to look at it. Second reason is a kind of fatigue. Uh, so many people have died in Congo and uh, that it's become uh, difficult to hear of more people dying and people have become tired of these stories of death, uh, killing, violence uh, in Congo and in Africa in general. I think both these factors combine to leave Congo, to relegate Congo to this sort of void in our news. Congolese were very aware and very grateful for my presence in general. We're grateful that someone from the outside had come. They were acutely aware of their link to the world, uh, acutely aware that their future, uh, their destiny was also in the hands of the outside world to a large extent because foreign powers provide so much money to the government, they hold, they prop up. Uh, leaders and Congolese leaders and governments and uh, it's a very out because their country is such a morass of corruption and dysfunctionality they are people who are outward looking and they they s look to the world for solutions for hope for a better future uh, for some possibility I, wh while I was in Congo, I was seeing these enormous uh, events and uh, places where catastrophes had occurred. And to witness those and travel through those and continue to report on them actively in an engaged way, uh, which is what I did for a year and a half, I had to build a sort of shell around myself, uh, sort of protect myself from what I was seeing, the people I was meeting, the stories I was hearing. And it was only when I left that, the, that I shed that shell and when I felt what had happened to me. And that's when I began to scribble uh, at a furious pace the first draft. It took me only two months to write 100,000 words. And uh, th that was sort of the beginning of, of this book, which took four years to, to write and arrive at. More and more, uh, I've realized that in Congo, the people are incredibly entrepreneurial, incredibly talented, uh, visionary in some way. Uh, they have an idea of what their future ought to look like and how beautiful it could be. And that is Congo's strength. That is Congo's, uh, uh, th that is what will build uh, a better future for Congo.